Welcome to the Weekly Lead Podcast. This is week nine, and I'm Becky Tirabasi, your host. And my goal is to not only inspire you to be a culture-changing leader, but I'm looking for 100 weekly leaders to join my team. And to be a weekly leader, to listen to this podcast is meant to cause you to L-E-A-D, lead using four tenets, loyal to God's word, encouraging to others, advocates for the young generation, and devoted to prayer. So L-E-A-D, we can all do it. And in fact, I'm new to podcasting, but I'm not new to speaking and writing and presenting these tenets of leadership. So rather than for the next few weeks, invite a guest to help us lead, I've taken some of my favorite classic authors and their incredible books that were written in the past few decades, even the past few centuries. And over the next few weeks, I'm going to encourage you through their uh, lens to lead. This week, I'm using J.I. Packer's book, Knowing God. It was a systematic theology uh, course textbook for me at the close of my seminary degree at Denver Seminary. And it was really, it came at the end of J.I. Packer's life that I wrote a paper on knowing God. If you're watching on YouTube, then you can see I'm holding up this little book, textbook, written in 1973 by J.I. Packer, a theologian and someone who has shaped the lives of Christians over the past few decades. As we go through today and every week on the Weekly Lead, I always start with loyalty to God's Word. The Change Your Life Daily Bible is a special edition one-year Bible. The Study Bible edition is somewhat new to me and to you, but We know that 100,000 people already have been using the Change Your Life Daily Bible over the last few decades to read through the entire Bible in a year in just 15 minutes a day. And so in, in the course of saying, yes, we have a systematic theology, one of the things every believer should do is know what you believe. And in knowing God, you need to read the word to hear his voice. That should be something simple that we all do. And yet, this is interesting. On a recent chapel presentation by Christian Smith, a Yale, well, he he works with Yale, but he is a professor at Notre Dame. He said, the sacred scriptures of the 21st century are in fact not the Bible, but Harry Potter's novels. So the challenge that I bring today to the weekly lead is this. Be loyal to God's word by reading through the Bible every single day in just 15 minutes a day, and you will have read the entire Bible in one year. Wouldn't you rather say that the sacred scriptures of your family, of your life, of your sphere of influence is the word of God versus Harry Potter? I hope so. So, true to form, we're reading through the Bible. We began on January 1st, but whatever day you begin reading through the Bible with me, you will hear me each week give you a little preview, a little peek of the week of what's coming. So here's this week, Leviticus 20. You can't miss it. What does it say? Be holy as I am holy. This is God speaking. And he also says this in Leviticus 20. I've set you apart from all other people to be my very own. Don't live according to the customs of the people where you're going. It is because I'm driving them out, they do shameful things that I detest them. So Leviticus 20, how does that apply to your life? Well, be holy as I am holy. You might say, hey, but that's Old Testament. And I would say, hey, in 1 Peter, it says the very same thing. In the New Testament this week, you're going to read from Mark chapter 10. And here's what's interesting. There's a beggar and he's blind and he's screaming. And what does everybody do? They try to shush him. When we're blind or addicted or broke, will you call out for God? I always say, 
The good news is good news to the desperate. And you'll find that in the book of Mark. Psalm 45 is one of the ATGs. If you hear me say that, that means all-time greats. And what is that? Um, Psalm 45, I've even had an inscription from that passage put on a pen. A former employee gave me that. What does it say? My tongue is the pen of a skillful writer. And then finally, the proverb. And, you know, I don't want to be... uh, Oh, pointed or mean, but here's what it says. Doing wrong is fun for a fool, but living wisely brings pleasure to the sensible. I don't know if you recall, I wrote a paper on uh, emptiness, even suicide prevention. And one of the things I discovered that the reason people use or abuse drugs and alcohol is first it's fun, then it's to fit in, and finally it's to forget the foolish things you've done. So, as the Word of God um, is important to you daily, more and more you will hear God show you, tell you how to lead in your sphere of influence. The weekly lead is L-E-A-D, loyal to God's Word, encouraging to others. J.I. Packer's book, written in 1973, as I mentioned, is called Knowing God, and he discusses Um, the Bible and knowing God from the standpoint of a very simple concept. And he writes it this way. The peace of God is first and foremost peace with God. It is a state of affairs in which God, instead of being against us, is for us. The peace of God then primarily and fundamentally is a new relationship of forgiveness and acceptance with God through Jesus Christ. I say this because so many people are anxious, afraid, full of anxiety, unforgiving, resentful in our nation and in the world. When we present how to know God to our sphere of influence, we cannot forget that we're inviting people into a relationship with the God who gives peace. And I can attest to this. The day I came to Christ, I was an addict. I was suicidal. I was broken. I was broke. I was living with my boyfriend. I thought I was pregnant. I could go through this whole list. But one of the first impressions I had of God when I asked him to come into my life in a simple prayer was a peace that came over me. John 14 says, My peace I give to you, not as the world gives, give I to you. We live in a world that is full of turmoil. We must access the peace of God for ourselves. And it is a peace with God when we enter into a personal relationship with Him. And when we're encouraging to others, remember, people are looking for peace. They cannot attain it without the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is the part that you can give as a gift to them that God has given as a gift to you. A. L is for loyalty to God's word. E is encouragement to others. Change the atmosphere when you walk into the room. Do you bring the peace of God with you when you walk into a room? Or are you full of anxiety and turmoil? Just say those simple prayers. Come into my heart. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Let me bring the peace of God with me wherever I go. A is for advocates for the young generation. And this is a twist, perhaps. You're thinking, I'm an adult. You know, when I'm looking for 100 weekly leaders, I'm looking for 10 collegiate leaders. I am. I believe that you can be a young leader and should be, and God has called many of you to do that. I'm looking for parents and educators. I'm looking at least for 40 parents and educators. Why? Because you are the advocates for the young generation. It's your role in life. I'm also looking for 40 nonprofit and for-profit professional leaders who are already impacting the world. And finally, I'm looking for 10 pastors and politicians. So you see, 100 weekly leaders would change 
the atmosphere, yes, not of any, not only of any room you entered, but the lives of the young generation around you. I'm absolutely sure we are to make a difference for the young generation. Well, J.I. Packer in Knowing God was absolutely sure as well. He said, knowing God should have four effects on your life. And I put this through the lens of a young leader. You should have great energy for God. And who did he use as his example in his book, Knowing God? If you're watching me on YouTube, you know that this textbook is something that anyone can purchase by J.I. Packer. And it's a systematic theology type of uh, text. But in it, he really explores knowing God's benefits, which would be great energy for God, as Daniel had. Great thoughts of God, that you have um, aspirations to do something for God. You have words from God. You have ideas from God. And he has given them to you. you <laughs> finally, you have great boldness for God. I love that um, I have a weekly prayer meeting at my church where Roger and I are co-pastors in Newport Beach, California. And half of the room for every prayer meeting is under 30 years old. It's the 20-somethings who are bold for God, especially in their prayers. And finally, as Packer is very adamant about, you must have a great peace in your life with God. So to know God, you should change the atmosphere in the room with a peace, but also a great peace that includes no FOMO, which is fear of missing out. This is why I love seeing the young adults come to the prayer meeting. Why? Because they have made a decision on a Sunday night. I can give one hour to be with my church, young and old, to pray for the needs of our nation, of our nation's leaders, of our um, sphere of influence, wherever you're leading. And then, of course, for those in our own community who need prayer, advocates for the young generation would be not only the adults advocating, but young leaders leading the way, loyal to God's word, encouraging to each other, advocates themselves for the young generation, and finally, devoted to prayer. Wow. I, um, obviously, I've had this book. It's actually Roger's book, my husband's book. His pastor gave it to him when my husband was working for Youth for Christ. He'd only been a Christian for three years, and he wrote an inscription in the front of it as a pastor to a young youth worker. We love that you bring your sphere of influence, your kids, your Youth for Christ kids to our church so that we can minister to them. How cool is that? Well, in Packer's book, he gives advice on being devoted to prayer, and he talks about it through the lens of the Holy Spirit, um, that the Holy Spirit, when you're praying, will guide you. But you can, um, there are pitfalls to prayer where you don't let the Holy Spirit guide you, where you stop his influence in your life. And, and Packer gave five pitfalls, and I thought I would just share them with you. First of all, when you pray, think. Now, it, that, that may be an unusual thought to you, but don't just parrot what other people are doing and saying. As you pray and ask the Holy Spirit to guide you, think. Is he giving you a new thought, a new idea? discern. Then he says, number two, think ahead. In other words, it's how I drive. I'm like, um, should I go here? Should I? Uh, I look ahead. What's coming ahead? As you pray, ask God to inspire you for what's coming ahead. He says, another pitfall is that you won't take advice. In other words, the Holy Spirit wants to give you advice, and he wants to give you wise leaders to give you advice. Fourth, he says, suspect yourself. Ask yourself your motive. Why am I praying for this? Why do I want this to succeed? In my partner prayer notebook, something that is a companion to the Change Your Life Daily Bible, I confess my sins in writing every day. I say, search me, God. Know me. Test me. It's the why. And then finally, the fifth pitfall is that people don't wait on the Lord. 
there's a there's a quote I can't remember who said it, but when in doubt, don't. It's a simple little quote. As you're praying and you're feeling impulsive, or you even want to get up and stop praying, ask yourself: When I'm in doubt about something, I'm just going to wait until God gives me confirmation. I want to invite you not only to subscribe to the weekly lead and invite your friends, but become one of the 100 weekly leaders that I am looking for to help me reach a nation, to turn back to God, that we might lead together with loyalty to God's word, encouragement to others, changing the atmosphere in the room, advocacy for the young generation, and devotion to prayer. I hope you liked J.I. Packer's thoughts on knowing God, both the pitfalls and the benefits. But get the textbook yourself. You'll love it. And if you'll join me, I'll give you an idea of how you can get a weekly lead magnet from me. Tune in, subscribe, and I'll see you next week.